Hi, my name is Ashish and you are watching Art of Loving Money. Following the collapse of Silicon Valley Bank, I was struck by the widespread panic among shareholders and investors. However, I was even more surprised by the messages I received on WhatsApp in various groups. These messages highlighted how little people understood about the situation and how some individuals were exploiting the platform to promote their own political or personal agendas. This was distressing to me and I felt I should create a video that could explain the reasons behind the bank's failure in simple, easy to understand terms for the average person. To understand this, first we will have to go through some banking concepts. Let us start with what is a bank and how does it make money? A bank is a financial institution that provides a range of services to its customers such as deposit accounts, loans, credit cards and investment opportunities. The bank collects funds from both individual and corporate depositors and then lends out this money at a higher interest rate. Essentially, the bank earns money by charging borrowers more interest than it pays to the depositors. The difference is called as net interest margin, which serves as a significant source of revenue for the bank. Now the question is, how come it is a problem? For this, you need to understand fractional reserve banking. I will explain with the help of an example. Person A deposits 50 pounds. Also, person B deposits 50 pounds. Now, bank has 100 pounds in total. Federal Reserve Bank in US or RBI in India regulates the bank and sets CRR, cash reserve ratio, which is the percentage of deposits that bank are required to hold to regulate cash supply. For instance, in our example, where bank had 100 pounds, if CRR is set to 10%, a bank can let up to 90 pounds to different people and keep 10 pounds as cash reserve. Now, if both person A and person B go to the bank on the same day and wants to withdraw back their own 50 pounds, the bank will go into trouble because it has only 10 pounds as reserve. So in theory, if people lose confidence in the bank and starts withdrawing their own money at the same time, any bank could go bust. This is called as bank run. Please note that in US, CRR is set between 0 and 3% and in normal circumstances, cash flow is maintained. Now, let us try to focus what happened to Silicon Valley Bank. It primarily deals with startups. These startups get their funding from big investors and other sources and they keep their money with S maybe, just like you and me keep our money in the bank. But unfortunately, Silicon Valley Bank had two major issues. First is operational issue. Most of the companies who had their money in SVB stopped taking loans because the interest rate is now very high and the cost of borrowing has increased considerably. Also, companies have held their other modes of funding like IPOs because the market conditions are not good to raise funds. These companies now only have the option to use the money kept in their bank account for their day-to-day -day expenses. As I explained earlier, if everyone starts taking their money out, the bank may run into cash flow problem. Now, this was fueled by second issue. SVB used majority of depositors' money in US Treasury bonds, which are considered to be the safest form of investment. In simple terms, these, in simple terms, these are bonds where government promises to pay the face value of the bond after a given time. Just like I put my money in fixed deposit and bank promises me to pay a certain amount after X number of years. So your question will be, what is the problem if it is the safest form of investment? It is not a problem if SVB could wait till the maturity of the bonds because government will pay them the money. But if in case they are forced to sell the bonds in secondary market because they need cash today, they have to incur huge losses of up to $15 billion. Let us understand why 
value of bonds would decrease in today's market. Clients were bought. The interest rate in US was 0% in 2020, and now central bank has aggressively raised it to 4.7% to control inflation. SVB has invested in long-term 30 years bond, which were giving around 1.7% year. But instead, if those bonds were bought today, it would give over 5%, making the earlier investment less attractive. Now, if SB, SVB is forced to sell the same bonds which are due to mature after 25 to 30 years, giving 1.75% yield, then today's market value will be less than the original investment. I hope it makes sense to say that when central bank rates increase, the bond value decreases. Looking at balance sheet of Silicon Valley Bank, it had $91 billion worth bonds held till maturity, but their current value is $76 billion. This indicates an unrealized loss of $15 billion. Investors looked at the balance sheet and realized that they are sitting on a ticking bomb and advised people to pull their money out. This created a bank run for Silicon Valley Bank, which was already going through operational issues. For arranging cash, they had to sell their investments at a loss and then they reached a point where they said, now we cannot do it anymore. This collapsed the bank and its share value went down. US Treasury has now confirmed that all depositors' money is safe and no one is going to lose their deposits. Also, HSBC has bought the UK arm of SPB bank. I hope this has given you an insight and an understanding of what happened with Silicon Valley Bank. If you liked this video, please consider subscribing and hitting the like button. See you in my next video and until then, bye bye.